Today on Motors, Chris shows you how to improve the exterior of a Jeep Wrangler JK. And Alan checks out the fastest production car in the world, the Hennessy Venom GT. So buckle up and hold on tight because Motors starts now. Well, cool, that should actually be easy to fix. Hey, welcome to Motors. Now in the past four Jeep Wrangler JK episodes, I've shown you how to install a supercharger, lift it, new wheels and tires, bumpers with a winch, and a whole lot more. In today's episode, we're returning back to our Jeep, and I'm gonna show you how to install an LED light bar, a new hood, a new fuel door, some new shift knobs, and a whole bunch more, including something called a Jeep backbone. But first, let's get some new steps on our Jeep. The Amp Research bed step for our Jeep Wrangler provides a quick and easy rear step platform that tucks away nicely when not in use. Now first you're going to want to remove a couple of bolts underneath the rear of the Jeep. After that's done, go ahead and assemble your Amp bed step using a 15mm socket, attach the provided steel bracket to the linkage assembly and torque to 20 foot-pounds. Use the threaded plate provided and insert it into one of the upper mounting slots of the Jeep. Install the fully assembled bed step using the provided hardware. After making sure everything lines up on the test fit, torque your 15 and 16 millimeter mounting bolts to 20 foot-pounds. Finally, fully extend the arm and install the step using the provided torque screws and a T25 driver and then take it for a test drive. Next up, we've got the Amp Research Power Step, which provides a much more comfortable way to enter and exit taller vehicles. Like the bed step, the power step tucks away nicely and out of the way until you need to use it. Locate the rear linkage assembly and measure out your mounting point for your first step arm. You're going to need to drill a 3 8 inch hole for the rear idler linkages. Install the provided adapter plate and linkages using the 13 millimeter bolts and torque everything down to 16 foot pounds. Now don't forget to install the LED light bracket in between the pinch weld and the arm linkage while you're down there, and then repeat everything on the other side. Moving on to the front, install the motor into both front linkage assemblies using the provided screws and hex bolt, all tightened down to eight foot pounds. As always, having Craftsman tools makes the job a lot easier. Find your mounting points for the front arms and install the provided threaded J-clips. These will be located underneath your Jeep, roughly centered to the front doors. Now be sure the motors are pointing toward the front of the vehicle when mounted, as shown here. Install the remaining LED lights, and after everything is mounted, wire it up using the provided wiring harness. Now feel free to check out some previous episodes of Motors to brush up on the wiring portion of this installation. The Amp Research Power Step automatically extends and retracts when any door is opened or closed. Now for more information on the power step or the bed step that we installed earlier, just head on over to amp-research.com. The RK Sport hood provides a more aggressive look to your Jeep and just uses the hardware from your stock hood. So begin by removing the fasteners in the front and the rear of the hood and keep all of that because it's going to be reused. Now grab a friend and carefully remove your stock hood. The RK Sport hood comes unpainted from the factory, giving you the option to color match or add some flair to it. Now before we took it to paint, we reinstalled all the stock hardware on the RK Sport hood and did a test fit to make sure that everything lined up properly. Now we decided to keep things simple and color match the hood, leaving the carbon fiber accents untouched. Go to rksport.com for more information. It just never ends with you. I feel like if it's not one thing, it's another. Well, that ends today. The Craftsman C3 line. 
one battery, more than 30 tools, and the power to tackle any job that stands in your way. You're welcome. The C3 line from Craftsman. Get the new, more powerful XCP battery. Now runs up to four times longer. Craftsman. Trust in your hands. Now check out this grill from Drake Off-Road. It's going to provide our Jeep nice filler for those giant nostrils. Begin by opening the hood and use a Phillips head screwdriver and a pry tool to remove the screws and fasteners from the top of the grill. Disconnect the turn signal lights, then the grill. Then align the grill inserts and fasten them using the provided bolts. Reattach your corner lights and the final grill assembly and you're done. Next, I installed the fuel door from Drake Off-Road. First, remove the driver's side taillight with a Phillips head screwdriver and wiggle the stock fuel door out after pushing in the fastener clips. Now slide in your new fuel door and make sure it lines up properly and then clip it in. Now here's where you're going to want to measure twice and cut once when drilling the fuel door fastener holes in your Jeep sheet metal where you're going to have a really bad day. Now install the hex bolts provided into the holes you just drilled and tighten everything down. Finally, reinstall the tail lights and you're good to go. Now moving on to the interior, we'll be installing new shift knobs from Drake Off-Road. Remove all the stock knobs, just take some good old fashioned elbow grease. No fancy fasteners here. Pry off the top, the bottom, and then the center piece in that order and the shift knob should slide right off. Now slide the new shift knob on and fasten it using the proper sized hex key. Install the tiny tire provided over the shift knob. Repeat for the other knob just to the left of it and you're ready to roll. For more information on all the great products we installed on our Jeep from Drake Off-Road, just head on over to drakeoffroad.com. The American-made Jeep Backbone provides a large and secure cargo space for your Jeep that integrates seamlessly with no visible attachments. After you've laid out all your pieces, apply the provided rubber gasket material to the underside of each Backbone panel. Now the leftover 41-inch gasket will be applied later. Now to avoid scratching up your Jeep, grab a friend and lay your panel pieces down for a test fit. Then mark the area where your roll bar gaskets will be installed. Hopefully your lines are a little straighter than mine. Now reinstall your top panels and make sure they fit snug to complete the seal. Take care not to tear the seal by using a flat object to depress the seal like a screwdriver. Now loosely attach the third panel, this is the vertical one with the speaker cut out, and fasten with the provided bolts. Then take each of the four levers and install them so they latch under the frame of the Jeep and tighten everything down. Now install that remaining 41 inch gasket that we had earlier and you're all set. Now this included an optional cargo bar helps things from sliding off the top of your backbone. And this optional Jeep rear windshield installs easily by sliding through the provided channel system and mounting onto the roll bars. Now for more information on the backbone, check out jeepbackbone.com. And now Alan's in Houston, Texas to get a tour of Hennessy Performance by John Hennessy himself and to check out the fastest production car in the world, the Venom GT. After having John Hennessy on the show at Barrett Jackson. Can I drive it, please? Yeah, you can, as a matter of fact. The okay. sun's shining, come on. Okay. 
I decided to take him up on his offer to visit Hennessy Performance Engineering just outside Houston. The instant I walked in, I was greeted by the fastest production car in the world, the Venom GT. And it wasn't much longer that I was greeted by John Hennessy himself. Hey, you know we can build you one of those. Hey, John hey Hennessy. Hey, bro. <laughs> Good to see you. Thanks for coming in early, man. Appreciate it. Welcome to Hennessy Performance, the home of lots of horsepower. Now, I'm coming here to see what you guys are doing inside the belly of the beast, so you're going to show me around? We've got a lot of horsepower out there waiting for you. Come Let's on, do it. Yeah. check it out. All right. Hennessy Performance was founded in 1991 as an extension of John Hennessy's competitive racing spirit. Nearly 25 years later, Hennessy is in high demand with automotive manufacturers, celebrities, and those who share his speed-focused ambitions. Nice. So, uh, here we are. Yep. And you know what? This car right here, the Venom GT, is just so beautiful in white. 10 or 12 in the whole world, and two of them are here, right? Yeah, they're very rare. Very rare. You know, the Venom GT was a car that we built for ultimate speed. Maximum horsepower, minimal weight. So here at Hennessy, you've got a Ferrari, you've got a Z28, you've got a Cadillac, you've got an Aston Martin, you've got the Venom GT, right. you've got a Mustang, you've got trucks, you've got SUVs. Right. I mean, just this grouping of cars right here is amazing. Yeah, and it's not just a Z28, it's a thousand horsepower Z28. <laughs> and the, the CTSV is a thousand horsepower. So, you know, these cars are very special from the factory but in a lot of cases we're doubling or more than doubling the power output so it really takes the car to a, a whole different level. And you also warranty and I think that's a huge part of what Hennessy's all about. It's very important for our customers to have peace of mind and be able to drive it every day if they want to and so the warranty is an important part of the process. So this Venom GT, they're not all the same obviously, they're hand built. Right. What's different about this one? Each Venom GT is a little bit different from the standpoint that every car is hand built as you said We've got about 4,000 man hours. The cars are built completely from the ground up. We utilize some Lotus components within the cockpit, but everything else is brand new and bespoke. And this is the first only white Venom in the world. So. I love the white, and I yep. love what you've done on the inside it's with nice the red. Contrast. and A lot of carbon fiber. Right. And, and what, so as far as when you guys build these, where are they built? We build the rolling chassis, and all the carbon fiber work is actually done in England. Then we fly the rolling chassis over here to Texas, and do all the mechanical work. So engine, transmission, brakes, fuel system, exhaust, do all of the testing and final assembly here. So it's about 40% built in the UK and about 60% built in Texas. <laughs> here we are with John Hennessy. This is Motors. You want to stay with us because we're going to walk around the shop with the man himself. If it's your car, why not make it your interior? Transform the look, feel, and quality of your interior with cat skin leather, the world leader in custom automotive interiors. Visit catskin.com today to find out how easy and affordable it is to get a cat skin premium leather interior for your vehicle. Cat skin, express, transform, drive. In addition to administrative offices and a customer showroom, Hennessy's 30,000 square foot facility comes equipped with 20 service bays, 16 vehicle lifts, a welding and fabrication shop, a Dynojet 248C chassis dynamometer rated at 1800 rear wheel horsepower, oh yeah, and a quarter mile drag strip and also a 1.4 mile road course to allow testing and development all to be done on site. Hennessy Performance also operates a state-certified tuner school on-premises, offering hands-on instruction to students interested in pursuing a career in aftermarket performance tuning. The school has also provided Hennessy with some of its own in-house technicians. So we have about 24 service bays here. At any given time, we're working on about 60 cars from people around the world, literally. I would say 80% of our business is U.S. 20% is international. Guess what, we're the go fast guys. If we like a car and somebody else has it and they want to make it go fast and we feel like we can do a good job of that, give them reliability, give them a warranty. Uh, we can keep walking down the line here, but as you see a lot of Raptors. Velociraptor SUV. Yes sir, that we basically take a Ford Raptor truck and make our own version of like a, if you took a Raptor and a Ford Excursion and you merged them together. So full-size SUV, it's got up to seven seats in it, or even eight seats if a client wants, with all the storage room in the back, and, uh, but with all the full off-road capability of the Raptor. 
And so that's uh, a rare vehicle in itself. It is too. a very rare yeah. vehicle. I mean, the cost; those vehicles cost a quarter million dollars. Wow! And uh, but that's not just a Raptor. That is a super Velociraptor. Correct. And now you have a Raptor here. Obviously, I saw there was a lot going on under the hood and under the vehicle. Twin right. turbo. Right. In the last, you know, four plus years, we've modified over 400 Raptors. Most of them superchargers. But one of our very first Raptors that we modified, we built a twin turbo system because the blower didn't exist for it. It is ridiculous to drive something that that weighs almost 6,000 pounds. It's got 800 <laughs> horsepower. Cool. Well, and the Velociraptor SUV is right. equally as beautiful. A yep. couple of those in the build. Sure. And then another Cadillac. Cadillacs. Cadillacs have been a huge part of our business. I'm a big Cadillac fan. Got a chance to run one on a, on a toll road near Austin, and that went 221 miles an hour. And so, uh, <laughs> Yeah, in the last four or five years, we've probably built over a thousand CTSVs. So, uh, and I had one of these. I mean, I think these coupes are just so mm -hmm. nice. It's mm -hmm. just like a man car, you yeah. know. But I had it out at the racetrack, just going around in circles, right. going sideways, drifting yeah. in a Cadillac. Yeah, we're very excited about the next gen CTSV. Well, like you said, you have a lot of lifts and a lot going on. Right. But now I want to head over to the dyno, see what Come you on. got going on. It's gonna make some noise. All right. All right, Taylor. So you've seen the shop, you've seen some of the guys working on some of the cars, all right? Ultimately, it's about what do these modifications do? And this is literally where it happens. This is where the rubber meets the road, in this case, the rolling road, right. our chassis dyno. dyno. Yeah. And so we've got a new C7 Corvette here. It's got our HB700 upgrade, supercharged. And our calibrator, David, is going to go and fire it up and make a dyno pull. So have at it, David. Love it. So he's got it fired up, he'll go through and turn off track control and stability track. He's got his laptop hooked up so you can measure all the telemetry. Each vehicle that we build is specifically tuned on the dyno and test driven on our racetrack before we deliver to the client. So whenever you're ready boss, go ahead and nail it. Don't hurt your ears now. But look how smooth the curve is. Look at that's the horsepower, and uh, that's about a 250 horsepower jump over factory. Unbelievable. So, uh, all right, Alan, you've seen the whole process from start to finish, from the wrenching to the final dyno uh, test. And uh, guess what? I got a bunch of cars I got to build. <laughs> So uh, get the heck out of here, and we'll uh, catch you next time. <laughs> All right, John Hennessy. Back to you, Chris. We've been at Hennessy Performance. I don't know any better place to be in Texas. Parts. Brought to you by Craftsman. Don't you just hate it when that check engine light comes on? And don't you hate it even more when you don't know why? Well, if you're like me, then you need to get a code reader for your ride. And this one even troubleshoots ABS codes. It's called the Craftsman CAN OBD2 Code Reader with ABS. You could go old school and disconnect your battery until that check engine light goes away, or you could whip out your Craftsman scanner to read, troubleshoot, and fix the issue like a pro. This tool not only gives you the code, but also a description on its all-in-one color display. This must-have addition to your toolbox works with almost any vehicle, both foreign and domestic, manufactured after 1996. Clearing a check engine light is as simple as the click of a button. This reader gives you the ability to run battery and alternator tests so you know where to start when your vehicle won't. Backed by a two-year warranty, batteries are included with this along with an OBD2 cable, mini USB cable, and a user-friendly quick reference guide. Head on over to Craftsman.com for more details. When a toolbox and a winch have a baby, you get a compact and portable frame with a solid 1.5 horsepower motor ready to pull 4,000 pounds just about anywhere you can take it. This compact treasure chest, called the Super Winch winch to go not only stows away the included shackles, straps, and simple wiring harness, but the included pulley block pulls up to 8,000 pounds right out of the box so you can put on a show just about anywhere. Super Winch also makes sure your hands are safe and stylish while winching by including a pair of officially branded gloves. Needing only power from the sure gripped alligator clip battery leads and the very specific instructions on whether to pull or not, the winch to go gets up and running in no time. The included certified Dyneema synthetic rope is stronger than steel and ready to be put to the test. Multiple two and four bolt mounting positions allow you to mount this baby just about anywhere you can fit it. ATVs and snowmobiles included. The best boxes are able to be stood on and this one is no different. 
Along with more info on the two-year warranty, superwinch.com has all the specs you need on the winch to go. Check it out. Whether you transport your cargo in an SUV or crossover, sometimes you need some extra protection from everyday damage to your cargo area. Covercraft has you covered with over 225 custom cargo area liners to protect your ride. In addition to being compatible with split seats, it comes with a fold-out bumper cover to protect your vehicle during loading and unloading. All of those tools, groceries, and whatever other weird stuff you can fit in there can take a toll on your stock interior. Covering all the way up to your headrest, this liner not only protects your vehicle's interior from dirt and water, but it's also very easy to clean. Installation and removal of the liner is a piece of cake with the integrated tie-downs exactly where you need them thanks to the custom fit. Backed by a 90-day warranty, you can find your perfect match at Covercraft.com. E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs are the most powerful spark plugs you can buy. They deliver a more complete fuel burn, more power, better economy, and reduced emissions. E3 Diamond Fire spark plugs at auto parts and lawn and garden stores everywhere. Letters brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs, born to burn. Hey, welcome to Letters. Now you got a question for me? Well, I'd love to answer it. So just go to the Motors website and click on the contact page. But first, a quick shout out to Genuine Hot Rod Hardware for this cool shirt. And be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And now for our first letter, which comes from Carl Martin. He wrote in and said, hey Chris, loving the show. You have a laid back and professional approach that really makes you feel like family. Will you ever do any Chevys? I love Mustangs, but there's some Corvette owners out there too. Keep up the great work. Well, thanks so much, Carl. I actually have worked on a few Chevy trucks on the show before, but not a Corvette. That could easily change though, as I'm always looking for new project vehicles and a Corvette sounds like a lot of fun. Now, Abram wrote in and said, just would like to say that I'm your biggest fan. Thanks to your show, I was able to do some small upgrades to my 5.3 liter Chevy truck. How about supercharging one of those? Because I would love to smoke those Ford Lightnings. Well, Abram, the Procharger P1 SC1 kits we installed on the Mustang and the Wrangler aren't going to be too different for your Silverado, which uses the same kit. So if you're anxious, check out those episodes for a quick overview and dive right in. That sounds like a really fun episode to put a blown Silverado up against a Lightning. Now Larry wrote in and said, I can only find a couple of episodes of you working on your 1968 Jeep CJ5. What happened to that project? I found the episodes helpful and enjoyed them very much. I'd love to see the rest. Great question, Larry, and I get that one all the time. I actually ended up abandoning that project due to the difficulty in getting parts for it, and we just don't have a whole lot of extra space around here. It'd be fun to work on an older Jeep again someday, though. Well, thank you guys for sending in your letters. You all get free E3 spark plugs for your ride as my way of saying thank you. To learn more about E3 spark plugs and their diamond fire technology or to see if they're available for your ride, just head on over to e3sparkplugs.com. Well, today we're returning to our Jeep Wrangler and we're going to, I'm going to, sh that, 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 that. No, no, what's I mean? Oh, what you, oh. <laughs> Is this still recording? Unrecorded. Backbone and something and, and some other stuff. They've shown you how to install a lift kit, new wheels and tires, bumpers with a winch, a screaming child, 